Oh. Hey there, welcome to today's video. My name is Chelsea Seaburn. This is a Smart Student channel. I'm gonna cut right to the chase. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to write an effective conclusion for a college level academic paper, dare I say it, every single time. By the way, this is a two part series where in the first one, I taught you guys how to write an effective introduction. So I do recommend watching that one first if you haven't already because these are two topics that are best learned together. But with no further ado, let's get started. All right, game time. So we all know that the conclusion is the end of your paper. It's the last thing you write to finish up your paper. So taking into consideration the introduction as well, one might say that the introduction and the conclusion together act as the end caps to your entire paper. You see, your introduction guides the reader into your paper while the conclusion gracefully guides them out. This is why the purpose of a conclusion is often described as providing closure to the reader. So with that understanding, a question I always like to ask students, or at least I like to get their mind thinking in this direction is, well, who is the reader? Who is the audience that you're writing for? You see, if you're a student writing student papers, this is good news because your audience is small, tiny actually. It's typically one person, your professor. And you see, by understanding that your professor is your audience, generally the one and only person that's going to read your paper, you can use this knowledge to your advantage in structuring your conclusions. Now, how do you do that? I'm glad you asked. What you wanna do is you wanna ask yourself, well, what is the purpose of my professor reading my paper? What are they looking for? The answer is simple and it's often overlooked. Your professor is reading your paper to see how well you demonstrated your knowledge on the topic in your writing prompt. In other words, they're looking to see that you've effectively answered the writing instructions you were given. So now let's revisit the part where I said your conclusion is the end cap to your paper. If that's the case, then one might say that it's the perfect place to demonstrate your knowledge on your given topic one last time. This is more good news for you because you already have all of the material you need to write your conclusion because you're wrapping up information that you've already written about. You see, your conclusion is never the place to introduce new ideas or theories. It's the place where you finalize those ideas and theories. But now let's move on to the building blocks that you can actually use to structure your conclusions. By the way, your conclusions are not limited to what I'm about to share with you. This is simply the best structure I recommend for students who struggle with writing conclusions. And so no matter what paper you're writing, whether it's long and complicated or short and sweet, these are the three components I recommend including a restatement of your thesis statement, a summary roadmap of your main findings in your paper, and a strong concluding statement, aka a final statement. Let's go ahead and break these down one at a time, starting with the restatement of your thesis statement. Now you might be wondering, why would I restate my thesis statement when I already said it at the beginning of my paper? It's simple, it brings your professor's mind back to the overall purpose of your paper. So think of it like this, your thesis statement is effective in your introduction because it guides your professor into your paper. Therefore, it's a logical choice to start your conclusion as to leading them out. Now, to be clear, you're not copying and pasting that exact thesis statement verbatim as the first sentence in your conclusion. You're gonna restate it saying new language, paraphrase it in other words. And by the way, if you didn't write out a formal thesis statement in your introduction for this paper, that's okay. For your conclusion, what you'll do is ask yourself, what was the purpose of my writing and what did I find out about it? Whatever the answer is to that, that's what you're gonna restate in its place for the conclusion. Now, the last note I wanna make about why restating your thesis statement is an effective choice is because oftentimes that first sentence to start your conclusion is the hardest one. Just like the first sentence in starting your introduction, there's a lot of pressure around it. Well, it happens to a lot of students in the same way for starting your conclusions. So if you always start with a restatement of your thesis statement, that takes away the pressure and anxiety, which is a huge bonus right there. Let's go ahead and move on to the summary of your main points. 
And like I already said, I like to think of these in terms of a roadmap. Now let me explain. So when you receive a writing assignment, you're given various objectives that you need to fulfill. So for your conclusion, I find it's a great strategy to discuss what you found out about each objective in the order you discuss them. So basically, you start with a restatement of your thesis statement, and then you're layering out the proof of why that thesis statement is relevant in that roadmap formation. Something else to be crystal clear on is that for this portion of your conclusion, you're not restating the objectives from your assignment. It's important that you talk about what you learned about those objectives. And by the way, the roadmap in your conclusion is generally the largest portion of your conclusion. And so, your conclusion length really does depend on the length and complexity of your paper, but a rule of thumb is that your conclusion should be relatively similar in length to your introduction. You want equally sized end caps, otherwise something is out of balance, or so they say, or so I say. But anyways, let's move on to the final component in your conclusion, which is a strong final statement. Don't let the word strong intimidate you because I'm about to simplify this for you as always. So you know how your thesis statement is generally where you, you talk about your topic, but more importantly, what you learned about that topic. In other words, your main claim for your entire paper. And then through your objectives is where you usually develop, support, and explain that main claim. Well, for your strong concluding statement, this is a great place to now give your overall impression of that claim. So now that you've written your entire paper, you have your thesis statement, you work through all the objectives, what is your viewpoint now on that claim? So in other words, did you discover something? What did you find? Did you take a stance? What was that stance? Did you answer a question? What was your answer? Did you solve a problem? What was your solution? Do you need to do more research? What are your suggestions? Or did you prove or disprove your thesis statement? How so? Stating your final impression of your research as your concluding statement is so effective because it ties a nice, neat, tidy bow on your entire paper. So in conclusion, the best way to write an effective conclusion for an academic paper is threefold. Restate your thesis statement, provide a roadmap summary of the findings about your main objectives, and then end with a strong concluding statement that gives your final impression of your entire paper. By the way, if academic writing is something that you struggle with, I have a free live masterclass coming up. I'll link that down in the description below because there's a few dates and time, so you need to pick which one works best for you. And lastly, don't forget to watch the introduction video if you haven't already, because they go hand in hand. But as always, thank you so much for supporting this video by watching it. I always love your guys' company. And yeah, basically, I'll see you in the next video.